guys. Welcome to QSOC's nine ball competition for semester one, 2019. Um, commentating today is me, uh, Glandon, and... Hello uh, everyone, I'm Harris. And uh, today in the finals, as we get the lag underway, is between Nigel Lin and Grant Liang. Lian. Lian, sorry, yeah. Um, Grant is doing actuarial at UNSW postgrad, and Nigel's also doing actuarial, but third year also at UNSW. Coming into the the final today, uh, Grant has said that he's feeling a seven out of ten with regards to his performance, with a standard deviation of two. And Nigel is also rating his performance at a seven out of ten. Grant's favorite color is white and yellow because that's the color of the nine ball and uh, Nigel's favorite color is a black and yellow all right so very very similar answers right here for those that don't know we're playing nine ball today you have to run the balls one to nine in order but once the nine wins doesn't matter how you pot it as long as it's not a foul yes always hit the lowest numbered ball on the table first that's the general rule how about I think it was four rounds, or oh, five rounds? It was yeah. four rounds of competitors today, and then we had semis, quarters, and now we're on the final. We had, yeah, four rounds of competition, yeah. So both of these players have defeated, how many is that? One, two, three, four. Both of these like players have defeated five. about four or five opponents. Great break. Oh, looks like a golden from here. Oh, if only he hit Grant's that harder. playing pretty well. So is Nigel. I'm not sure if the four goes in. While Harris does that, he goes from the bottom side here. Okay. Yeah. Well, while we're speaking of that of the comp, uh, a lot of uh, upsets today during the comp. We had um. Do you have any? Do you have any? Like, yeah, a lot of uh, yeah, like um, for example, a lot of people left early, right? A lot of people expected to progress a few more rounds left early. Uh, Harris, I feel like you potentially have an example of an upset. No, not really. I actually, I played, um, played Nigel's, Nigel's opponent before this round was Michael, and Michael beat me, so I got pretty far in the 20. I would have liked to progress more, but that's just the nature of the game. Sometimes you don't get the rules. That's very true. I see Grant take on the four that should go from the bottom side here in the he got really, he got really good position. Oh wow! Very unlucky to double kiss into the foul, but he really did fire that. Yeah, he was very straight, so he had to uh, draw it to where the camera will be the top rail. Draw it to the top rail, then come back. Yeah, draw it to the top rail, then come back down for the six in order for him to progress through the rack. I just snooker. Yeah. yeah. And snooker just means. Oh, is he snooker? I, I don't think he can see the whole ball. He can see like half of it. Probably not a pot on right When we're talking, when we're speaking of nine ball, uh, cue ball positioning is always very, very important. Very important that you plan two, three balls ahead at least so that you can continue running the rack and you can know kind of where you want the cue ball ahead of time, ahead of the shot that you're hitting. I think I'll be trying two rails here. Two rails here, just under the side pocket on the left side for the camera. I'm trying to come back across for the seven, just like... And that's exactly that's how Grant played it. It's a nice shot. Did you play in the comp today, Glenn? Yeah, I did. Uh, I don't know why you asked that question, but I don't know why you asked that question because I lost to you first round. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was it was it was a really good game actually. Uh, very very tight, five four. I feel like we didn't play at our very very best, but um, you know, it was tight. It was a good game. Nice angle for just one rail out. Yes. Oh, he's cu actually coming across to the line. Oh, and he's overrun it. That's right, I think he has the nine in the middle. Yeah. Grant actually played in... The last comp was April, right? The one that we... I think so, yeah. 
to the last competition uh, we played, which was 8-Ball last semester in 2018. Grant also made it to the final. He was playing Ben. That video didn't get uploaded because the file got corrupted. Wait, no, Grant didn't reach the finals. It was yeah. Kevin Alexander and Ben. Oh, really? Yeah. I swear we commentated one way, Grant. Was... No, no, it was Maybe Ben, it was... Kevin Alexander, and yeah. I think ben win. But I think Grant still progressed very far in the competition. Grant's he one always, of the strongest players. He always comes really far. Yeah. Every one of the strongest players in QSOC for sure. Yutang, uh, Yutong, who is your. <laughs> Wait, come back, come back, come back! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, Alright, as we say this, Grant's breaking off for the <laughs> uh, Grant's breaking off for the second frame after he wins the first frame. So the uh, tournament's in a winner breaks format. So if you win the frame, you stay on to break the next frame as well. Who do you Great think is going to win today? Great break. Well, who do you have your predictions on for winning today? Speak to the mic. We're saying it's Grant and Nigel, it's right? It's Grant and Nigel, yeah. Ooh. I want to pick Nigel because he's part of the committee, you know, you gotta, oh, okay. you gotta okay. support the committee, but I feel like Grant probably has a stronger chance of winning here. Okay, fair enough. Alright, well, as we view here, Nigel has a little shot on the one, little thin cut. Probably just play with top, uh, land the cue ball near where the five is. Perfect, there we go. And then he has a uh, shot on the two, very good. I see how, what he wants to do with this cluster on the right side of the table. Uh, the good. I like, I like just putting the two and maybe looking for a set. Yeah, I was just about to say, the good thing about uh, rotation games, uh, where we say it's nine ball and 10 ball, where we basically pot all the balls in numerical order is the fact that it's actually um, you have the option of playing safe when you need to and trying to uh, limit your opponent's options when they get on the table instead of just leaving them a clear shot I mean at this point even putting the two is not even beneficial to whoever, whichever player wants it so mm -hmm. at the moment Ooh. it's just a matter of uh, I don't know who can either wait for their opponent to break out the cluster or who will actually accidentally break out the cluster. Yeah. That's on the right side where the, where the three ball is. Mm -hmm. So not sure if Grant intended to play a safety there. It didn't look I like he, he did. Pot, yeah, but I think it's lucky that he actually didn't get the pot because he's right behind the cluster for the three. So. Nigel tackling that shot, missing. So through the tournament, uh, Nigel started off playing. How many players did we have? We had we a had lot. Had 64, right? Yeah, we had a lot. So nine ball was full this semester. Yeah. So Nigel, Nigel started with a bye in the first round. Then he won his second round match against De Deu, if I can pronounce that correctly. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Deu five one. Then he beat Matt Deng five two. Benedict Hockey 5-0 right? and then he also beat his semi-finals opponent Michael Wu 5-0 so a very very clear path for Nigel playing very well today and meanwhile Grant um, first round played Kenneth Zhang beat him 5-1 uh, second round sorry third round I should say uh, Martin Locke 5-2 Matthew Mack who's also one of the very strong QSOP players also beat him 5-2 right so very good showing there and then also beat a very strong opponent Jonathan Ng in uh, the semi-finals also 5-2 that match was very tight Jonathan's been playing very well this tournament he's also ranked number 7 in QSOC league at the moment and um you know, in QSOC League April. So a very strong player. Uh, let me just check if the six good. Okay. I think it does. As we say that, Nigel went for the 3 5 combo. So the combo has finally been broken out. I think it's just about if we get some flow this frame, we can on Oh, very hard cut by Grant there. Potentially could have taken his time a bit more, I reckon. But, you know, that's alright. 
think you can see the full ball. At least. Yeah, I had to kick that's out a it. good kick. I think that's going in. Ooh. That's a nice kick. That was a good hit. Didn't like sell 10. out as well. We have the cluster forming the left side. Oh, sorry, the right side. The six in the center. Oh. I don't know if there's that much benefit to potting the three or like even making an attempt to run out this rack when you have that cluster down there. The seven and the six are in quite an awkward position because even if you pot the six, the position on the seven is quite difficult. You might bump it and you might end up on the other side of the table. So, mm -hmm. Like I said, at the moment, it's just about seeing which player is going to take advantage of the fact that sometimes that cluster has to be broken. Nice shot there by Nigel. Oh, he's got a nice angle here that he could potentially break out with. But I don't know if he's, he's going to take that risk. Did you say the six went? The Perhaps. six goes, but yeah. position to the seven is hard because it's on the same side of the table. Yeah. Are they going to have to come two rails across or either bump it or step on the side pocket? Yeah, so, so he, he went for the break out out there. Oh, and he's really made it. Ooh. Oh. And I think he can see the really five. So he did end up taking that opportunity with that angle. Yeah. And got a lucky roll there, but then with nine ball, what we say is that um, you can have flops, right? So basically a fluke, so you don't have to call pockets. If you just hit the lowest number ball in the uh, nice shot there, if you hit a, the lowest number ball on the table and any ball goes in, you can continue your turn. So that was a very nice shot on the five. A little uh, drag shot here, what we say probably to um, just leave an angle on the eight for the nine. Right. Ooh, that was a right shot there, but unfortunately he hit a bit thick. Interesting in though, both, both players are left-handed. Left-handed players in pool are definitely not as common as right -handed. But honestly, Harris, I've, ooh, very nice safety there. Um, yep. Honestly, Harris, I have, I've legit never seen a bad left-handed player yet. I've honestly never seen a bad left-handed yeah, player. Life, yeah. Well, how are you gonna kick it? I think. Look, I know for you, Harris. If that was you, you would have jumped this a hundred times out of a hundred <laughs> times. But at this, yeah, that's, a that's a nice kick. He left the safe. That was good. The thing about kicking, I feel like, especially at a level where, you know, obviously we're not professionals or anything of that sort, is all about pace. You know, just making sure that you can kick at Oh! Oh, what a shot. Flick the climb. So that's what we mean by you can have a flop, right? Again, in the same frame, another flop there, another fluke. It's either A9 or tough going to the middle. I think he's going to go for the Yeah, I think... I think he's um, going for the cut. Yeah, I think... You know, pool is all, always about a uh, game of percentages, right? Whether you're more confident in, you know, a cut or a combo. And usually we say combos are pretty low percentage shots. So, you know, usually we won't really want to go for combos unless we, you know, unless it's kind of a given or unless we kind of have to take them, right? So this situation, Glennon, has come up not just in my matches, but I think a number of times throughout the day in everyone's matches where you have the eight and the nine, the last two object balls you need to win. You've got a tough position on the nine from the eight, and you're also faced with a tough shot to pop the eight ball. Often in these situations, it's it's always down to the player's decision of whether they play safe because there's two balls left, or whether they go for the kind of hard pop and try and get position on the nine. See so, what I mean? Nigel went for it there, and he ended up scratching right, because yeah. it was such a hard shot. He wasn't able to control the angles as well. But you'll notice that I think it will come up a lot in this match as well, especially because it's nine ball and the players is pretty good, like pretty uh, well skilled, right? I'm coming in a lot of situations where it's down to the last two balls and um, one player's decision will either make or break the frame, where it's should I pot this eight or should I play safe while there's still two object balls left. A really common situation and I think it's just down to experience. It comes down to experience uh, depending on like the manner in which a player will handle that situation. Mm -hmm. Easy clean up a ground. Definitely keep an eye out for those frames where it comes down to the last two balls. 
there's always a key shot. It always comes down to a key shot. Even if it's a safety battle, safety battle, it will always come down to a key shot. Is it 2-0? Yeah. The 2-0 to Grant now. That has nice momentum. I think we brought this up last time as well, but momentum in 9-ball is huge, right? Because uh, this format, uh, in the final, we're using a magic rack. Pretty much means there's no, there's no gaps between the balls when you break. So it's easy to guarantee a ball on the break and stay at the table at 9-ball. Which is why momentum is uh, so much more snowball-y in 9-ball than it is in another game like 8-ball. 100%. So you can guarantee the ball on the break every yeah. time. Yeah. And which ball can you guarantee on this rack? So if, so if we're looking at this, Grant's going to break from, from the left side. Yeah, from the left side. So we're looking at the 7-ball seven seven going ball in one. the bottom left pocket. Ideally, yeah. Ideally, yeah. And then the 1-ball to come up. That's the right side. Oh, the camera's over there. There we go, seven, seven ball, ball right in. in. And the one ball to come up to this, yeah. And usually the one ball will come up to a corner pocket up at the top of your screen. And ideally what you want to do is that you want to guarantee that seven ball just then that we mentioned, which, which is what we call a wing ball, right? Breaking from um, where Grant was breaking from. And then from there, you want to try and control the pace so that the one ball bounces past the side pocket and then up near a corner pocket, uh, which is what happened here. Really nice recovery shot right here. Uh, Grant didn't have the best position to um, get on the one, but he played that really, really nicely. So he had a, he has a very easy pot on the two here. The wing ball doesn't have to be the seven since uh, the only balls that are racked in order is the one is at the front, the nine's in the middle, and then for QSOC rules, the two is always racked at the back. For a lot of other competitions, uh, we don't enforce, people don't enforce that rule where you yep. have to rack it to the back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the wing ball won't always be the seven ball. It could be the five ball, it could be the four ball. Uh, the point is you're guaranteeing the ball in that position to go into that pocket. Yep. What that does for momentum is when you can stay at the table consistently, rack after rack after winning a rack and guaranteeing a ball, you stay in control of the table. You can uh, keep your opponent sitting in their chair. And right now, I think... Oh, Grant, I think, I th yeah. I think Grant's really getting into his momentum. He's Usually, really got the momentum of the match, yeah. especially because he's opening as well. Right, he's up to zero. Yeah. I think the biggest challenge for Major at the moment is just to break the momentum. Maybe he'll get an opportunity where Grant misses a pot and then yeah. he has to shift and the momentum back. That's right. Really take advantage that's of like the um, crux of being able to run consecutive nine ball racks and being able to win nine. -ball. That's a nice shot there. One of the reasons I lost my match uh, today, which was Hill Hill. Uh, my final match. I just lost my momentum towards the end. Even stuff like golden breaks, lucky nine balls where you flick the ball in. Even if the your opponent didn't intend to uh, to do that sort of stuff, to pot the nine off turn or by accident, it's still a momentum shift because you are no longer in control of uh, the table, both yeah. mentally and physically. Right, yeah. As we say that, yeah, Grant is now on a break and ooh. Gran is on a break and run. And, I um, think he'll be fine avoiding the side even if he plays yeah. all about the pot. As long as he controls the pace, he won't have any chance of scratching. Very nice. So Grant's really turning it up here with a break and run in the finals and putting up to a 3-0 right? Yeah, it's racist. I think it's racist, I'm pretty sure, yeah. But yeah, really, really nice clearance here. Uh, break and run. Uh, very, that's a very high skill thing to do, usually, when we're talking about that. Because you need to have a good break, right? And in 9-ball, be able to have a shot on the lowest number ball, then position your way through the whole rack, through at least, you know, or through the, at most, you know, 8 balls. And sometimes if you get a good break, you know, it'll be less balls, but... Still a very, very high skill thing to do, to be able to break and run. Definitely a uh, very high skill uh, final here and speaking of that uh we usually mention the area uh behind the line right we have a line on the second diamond on the top table right and then uh that's an area that a lot of pool players like to call the kitchen right so, so the section the section where the ground's breaking yeah from. so there's that line so you're not allowed to break from anywhere in front of that line right so anywhere behind that line we call that place we call ooh, Nine balls moving there. We call that the kitchen. Right? Do you have any idea why it's called the kitchen, Harris? Because when you break, stuff goes down the drains. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know when you, when you scratch off the brake, usually people are just like, oh, went down into the sink. It's like a pool, I think. Oh, yeah. No, no. Why is it called the kitchen? I mean, um, okay, so during the uh, early days of pool, right, where there weren't that many pool halls, and pool was more kind of like a uh, household thing, uh, a lot of the time people will put the pool table on uh, in their living room. Right, so they put their pool table in their living room and usually uh, connected to the living room is the kitchen, right? Now, they obviously don't want to break towards the kitchen. Right? They obviously don't want to face the table so that the rack is towards the kitchen just in case they jump off the, jump the ball, you know, jump the, they break the, you know, with their cue ball and then the cue ball jumps into the kitchen, right? <laughs> so what they do is they'll always orient the table so that they break away from the kitchen and then that side of the table just ends up being called the kitchen now. Yeah. And this is 100% a pull fact. Like, I'm not just making this up. Yeah, I, I am not making this up. I can guarantee you guys that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's your fun pull fact of the day. As we say that, very nice shot on the uh, two. You wanted to come a little bit further over. Two yeah, just to make the pot a bit easier. But I think what Nigel's doing here is um, just prioritizing the pot. And that is something that's actually really important. A lot of the time, some players, especially um, as players understand the table better, they'll try to go for positional shots that are just a bit, that, that are very difficult. But then instead, very nice shot, that instead you would rather want to just pot the ball you're currently on first and maybe leave yourself a tougher angle on the next ball, but still guarantee basically your control of the table, right? As you were mentioning before, just then, Harris. And especially in nine ball, if you kind of just, if you miss position, which is what we call where your uh, cue ball's not in a favorable position, right? Where you can't control the cue ball properly. Even if you miss position, there are still chances for you to play safe and to kind of still have control of the table. Um, as we say that, um, Nigel's got a bit of a lucky roll here, a good roll here where uh, he snooked Grant. One real kick to the pot. Yeah. Good hit, Quite good hit. Nice. So at least he hit the lowest number ball, which is in this case the four ball. So at least here, you know, um, Grant won't be giving up a ball in hand. I think the cut to the middle is favorable here. You reckon? Maybe he'll go for the bank, but I would cut it to the middle. Even if you overcut it, you send the four up to near the eight where it's still sort of safe. But I feel like if you cut the middle, it's very easy to snooker yourself behind the nine ball. Oh, uh, so he went for the bank. I think that was actually going towards the middle pocket, but um, he ended up double kissing it because of the pace. So that was a bit unlucky there. Still a very difficult shot though. So, you know. Uh, won't really be even expecting the pros to have a high percentage making that shot. The five has an obvious pocket. Ooh, Ooh big overdraw here. Just pop the four. He just wants some sort of position at the top of the table. For the I think he just needs to see the five, and I think from this angle, he might potentially even consider the five nine carom. So, so hit the five with the keyboard first, and then the keyboard will go into the nine, putting the nine right, which is a win. Yeah. Oh no, the if five went. Win, win. The five went the whole time. I guess our angle's not that good. It's yeah, good so from our angle here, we couldn't tell. Nice shot there. Oh, has he overpaced it? That's fine. That was a good two rounds. I don't know about you, Glennon, but I hate using the rest. I don't use it. Usually, I feel like I've actually gotten better at using the rest. I think Grants need to use it again. <laughs> yeah, um, using the rest for me is kind of like I've I've actually started to get a bit of feeling for using the rest recently. So I don't really mind it too much. It's a it's a bit awkward though. Not gonna lie. I guess Grants snooker backhand will help him as well. That's right. Oh, has he fluked the eight? Oh. So this is a very good chance for Nigel here. Once again, the situation comes up. You've got the eight and the nine, and you've got a tough 
I wouldn't say a tough position, but it's definitely there's got to be some work and some thought put into it. How I just gonna play this? We're in that situation again where it's crucial that whatever you do with the eight ball will dictate whether the nine ball is gonna be available. Oh, I mean that's okay. This is cuttable, right? Yeah. It's even bankable. Yeah. And I was. But you see how that, this is what I was saying before. That was the key shot. Right? Yeah, that's right. When you have the eight, the eight and the nine, nine you've got to make sure you control it. The frame. That's right. 100%. And it's also difficult. It's also difficult uh, because sometimes if you're not left with such a good shot, uh, you're forced to play what we call recovery shots, right? So if you're not left with like the ideal uh, position on the eight ball, what you end up having to do is you end up having to come up with a way. Uh, and an uncomfortable way at that to really position from the 8 to the 9 ball Ooh. so Nigel tried to cut that down the rail cut it a, just that bit too thin uh, didn't really make the 9 go so anywhere he lost all his power oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. oh no he retained all his power because it was so thin. yeah the object, the object ball had no power yeah that's right One of the basic concepts in uh, in nine ball and hitting balls is if you have a cue ball and an object ball, um, the fuller you hit the ball with the cue ball, the more energy your object ball will retain. The thinner you hit the ball, the less energy it will retain, and that's one of the that's one of the key concepts used for often for safetying uh, in nine ball because you can control the speed of your object ball and your cue ball. Yeah, maybe this sure. situation will come up later in the match while I'll explain it. But it's one of the key aspects of yeah, of playing nine ball is being able to control how much speed both of your balls have, not just the object ball and the cue ball. Yeah. Speaking of, um, speaking of the uh, styles, right? Just then you mentioned that you know using the rest, Grant, you know, could have an advantage because of his snooker background, right? Oh, another nice break there. As we see that the wing ball, which was the eight ball, if you guys rewind, right? If you guys want to rewind that, you'll be able to see that the it's the same position as the seven ball we were talking about earlier in the video. Right? Uh, that eight ball also just went straight into the corner pocket. And the one ball came. In the one, one pocket. Down, right? That's right. The, the one pocket, uh, the one ball, sorry, again, came one rail down and landed near a um, corner pocket, right? So that's a very useful way to. Um, Play our match it, play our ball. Ooh, Grant's found the window there between the three and the four ball. Nice that was shot. a nice shot because the, the two goes past the three. Oh, sorry, the three goes past the five. Isn't it? Oh, okay, so nice. Yeah, that was a very nice shot. One rail out, potentially come across the pocket. I I, I just want to emphasize that that ball was played. That shot was played really well by Grant because um that four ball we say that is actually very very big. Right, because the four ball actually preoccupies a lot of the angle and, and, and you know Grant could have been snookered behind the four ball had he been not that uh, been not that careful with his pace but as we see here looking like another break mm, yeah I was Again, just about just to say maintain his concentration that's right what's real why we say that Grant is one of the best players in QSO is because as long as, as long as Grant stays in position, um, what we say is some given pots, for example, like that one, uh, we say that Grant practically never misses them. Right? But here, even though this is a given pot, I think Grant's a bit straight. No, his angle's this. good for drawing back. Okay, it was kind of straight. Yeah, that was very straight. Back was, I think, the only shot. Yeah. Once again, there's all the pot. Another two ball situation where you have a key shot, hard position, hard pot. It's all about concentration. Oh, yeah, so he ended up too straight on that six ball, and then now he's I'm given. Leave it on. See what I mean? It's like a big momentum shift, right? If you can't transfer, if you can't translate uh, your run from the second last ball into the nine ball, then your run means nothing, and your opponent yeah. can just clean you up. That's, That's what I was trying to say about momentum on That's the last two balls. Nice shot should, there. Should Again, prioritizing the, the pot. Should be frame on the board for Nigel. Yeah. Nice shot there. Very good. So yeah, just then as I was talking about um, Grant's snooker background, right? 
you know, um, before, maybe during the quarters or something, um, you know, multiple people, including event, you know, some event organizers have told me that, you know, uh, you were probably one of the favorites in your bracket to actually get to the final, Harris. Me. Yeah. But um, it was, it's, it's actually interesting because um, I, was, I was hoping that you could not, not to take anything away from any of us, any of the contestants here in the finals, right? But I was hoping that um, we could actually, if you were in the final, uh, we could have been able to see a cool comparison between players who play snooker and players who play pool. Oh, oh yeah. say that. Because yeah. Nigel was in my bracket, right? Sorry? Nigel was in my bracket. So we yeah, had that's right. Pool versus snooker. Yeah. Champions. Not to take any th- anything away from Nigel, of course. But, um, yeah. Very interesting to see how um, players um, really play their positions and what kind of the shot choices that they decide to do. So Grant broke that a little softer so the one ball didn't come all the way over. But again, he still had the wing ball go straight in, right? And uh, he still has, I think he still has good position on the um, one ball. I don't think this goes in the pocket where the five is. Oh, I think he's playing it in the side. Oh, nice shot, nice shot. Very uh, nice he shot. also knocked out the seven, uh, making the three ball a little less awkward. So the eight was used as his stopper, but at the same time, I think he managed to knock the eight into the line of the two bot into the pocket too. So let's see what he does here. He might be going for the combo. Yeah. Shot, nice shot. Nice kiss on the four. Held him for the three. This one probably just draw it back. Draw, right? Yeah, draw it back. He wants to be just in that rectangle, just behind the four. He can potentially take it in the side or the corner. He has options. Yeah, in the four is there. leave for Grant as Harris goes and uh, removes the magic rack for Grant hello we're back that was our uh, MVP appearance on the on the big screen you see both of us uh, just helping Grant remove the magic rack there so the reason why we're removing the magic rack is because um, the magic rack is able to keep all the balls tight while affecting minimally the movement of the balls when uh, we're breaking uh, but at the same time uh, when we're talking about just rolling balls past the magic rack sometimes it could affect the trajectory of an object ball or a cue ball so whatever ball that rolls over but yeah as we say that very very hard cut uh, made by Nigel there which I gives him just, an opportunity I would just draw this out pump it in with all yeah one rail out that's, that's right cool. yeah so the good thing about this is that if we put backspin on the ball we'll change the angle of the cue ball so that it goes basically parallel to the top and bottom rail but as but you know, definitely not an easy shot. Again, um, Nigel just prioritizing the pot there and uh, unfortunately scratched into the corner. And if I had, if I was a uni student who liked playing pool, but I had, I had never entered a QSOP competition before, uh, what would you say is the, the best thing about the, about the competition uh, environment? at QSOC specifically that would make me want to play and to have fun at, on the day. Ooh, Grant missed what, a what very, very... Grant just missed a very easy given shot there. 
I think it was a ball in hand, in. actually. Who would sway me into playing if I was on the fence? Yeah, so yeah, sorry, to answer your question. Yeah, well, I mean, look, like, the thing with, I guess, you know, all uni societies, right, is the fact that we want to bring people together who have a common interest. And honestly, like, with everyone just really, like, whoops. <laughs> Ah, uh, that was a bit awkward. Anyway, sorry. You see, my uh, why 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 that happened? I should say is uh, I think I'm very passion. I'm too passionate about this, and uh, I get a bit emotional over that. So, um, but continue, continue. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Um. Anyway, you guys probably don't know what happened. But that's okay. Uh, but just a sign, sign all could happen a bit just then. But um, you guys probably wouldn't know. But anyway, sorry, Harris, to answer your question. Um, the thing is, with all uni societies, the main thing is to gather everyone who has a common hobby and a common interest, right? So for anyone who likes playing pool, joining QSOC will, you know, basically just bring everyone who likes playing pool together and everyone basically just loves it just as much as you do, right? And I think coming here and knowing that, you know, when you join QSOC, you'll be able to have a big community where you'll share like a big common interest with, you know. If you guys like pool, I heavily, heavily suggest you guys join QSOC because honestly, ever since joining QSOC, um, the people who I've met through QSOC are now just the core you know the core my core group of friends in my life as well and not just you know um just at pool and i honestly believe that you know it's something that can make you you know like you know i don't want to exaggerate and say like a lifetime but you know very very good friends and potentially for a very very long time so definitely if it's common interest of you to play pool um qsoc will be able to provide that environment for you to uh, again. Yeah, provide that environment for you to, um, yeah, really just, yeah, really just play pool comfortably, right? With people that, you know, you know will be nice and welcoming. Oh, I think he's undercut it. He didn't sell out though. Not exactly the easiest shot for Grant here. It's another no more bad, but I was, I was gonna say, it came down again to that uh, that final two ball situation. But the position on the eight was so crucial that it was just another turning point in the frame. Nice shot there. Good shot, good shot, good shot. Grant being a really, really good potter, he was able to, uh, yeah, hit that with confidence. It's 5 1, yeah, 5 1. So, this has been a relatively fast match, I would say. 9 ball in general is a faster game than 8 ball as well. Uh, because continuously there'll be, you know, le well, there's less balls on the table to begin with, right? Compared to 8 ball. And also, you know, as you run through. Um, you know, in April you, you have to kind of hit either, we say either solids or stripes, bigs or smalls, right? We have to hit a certain uh, category of our own. But in nine ball, both opponents hit the same set of balls. So usually we say in nine ball actually goes a lot quicker than eight ball. And this has been so far a very, very fast match as well. It's a pretty open rack. I like bumping the two towards the, the top left pocket. Yeah. Maybe you're running into it with a cue ball as you bought the one. Yeah. Or you could draw back, but I like I really like bumping it in the, into the round. Yeah. Just like Grant's done. 
Mm, a little bonus there with the potted four ball. Three rounds, yep, exactly as he played. Oh, and he bumped the five. Actually, that's a actually, favorable he bump. The five. So he doesn't have to play the combo. Yeah, so the five actually has a pocket now. Yeah, now I get both. <laughs> this one, how would you play this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. I think that was the rush one. So, Grant, top left? Yeah. No, he played top left. So, Grant tried to hold that ball. Um, with a bit of side spin, Grant tried to hold that ball with the side spin, but side spin makes the pot uh, a lot more difficult, we say. But the reason why we'll play side spin, top spin, play balls at different speeds, uh, it's really, again, all about cue ball positioning. I think he's sneaking. Yeah. And um, yeah, he full, cannot see the fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Dropped the magic crack and it landed, but it didn't move the ball. It just like oh, landed. that's awesome. That's pretty good. Oh, was that a foul? He did it that first. Yeah. He did it that first. And try. So we can see that Grant gets ball in hand anywhere on the table. Overran it a bit there. Wow, no hesitation. Straight into the side. As you can see here, Grant's playing faster and faster. Which really means that he's really in his groove. I mean, when you're 5-1 up, you still have a lot of momentum. It's like a, like a single four. It takes his one break. In... In rhythm. Nice uh, shot. Your, your opponent is able to capitalize on that and start winning frames and then come back. Very nice shot. They're very so authoritative. Six one, six one now. So at this point, we'll either see Grant just demolish the match or we'll see Nigel capitalize on a mistake that Grant makes and he'll shift and the momentum. Potentially crawl his way back, yeah. I think that's the nature of pool. Once you get in the groove, it's very hard to break it. But when you do break it, it snowballs. Everything snowballs. Rarely do you see a pool match, especially a nine ball, where you go frame for frame, as in your opponent scores a frame and then you score a frame and then your opponent scores a frame. Uh, it rarely goes like that in reality. But it's been a pretty, pretty quick match. How long are we? We're running on the 40 minute mark. 45 minute mark, yeah. Oh yeah, around the 40 minute mark actually, yeah. That would be devastating if uh, Grant Golden broke. <laughs> oh, is this the commentator's curse? Ah, uh, Grant just went for the standard break there again. I think he hit it a bit soft. Again, the one didn't come up near the corner. He still has a shot to the side though. Yeah. Everything but again, the wing ball went in again. Mm -hmm. right. He's just awkward position because the key ball's going to fly off the one. Didn't cut. Had to control the speed. Yeah. Not even, I think he can see it into the side. I think the potting angle's there. I think the ideal situation here is that he'll probably pot the one in the side and then try and bump onto, or on the screen, the uh, right side of the four ball to come for the two but I don't exactly know the angle so that's a very difficult shot oh wow it <laughs> went into the court oh I didn't know this it went into the angle is so deceptive yeah. in case you guys don't know we're on the top left of your screen the top right we're on the top right top right sorry yeah so um yeah oh nice shot there cutting a bit close alright flirting with the pocket there a little bit but no harm done Has he tied up the five? I think he has. Yeah, don't think it goes anymore. Yeah, I see a little shake on the head. That's an awkward angle. On the mm -hmm. Maybe he'll just pot this and then see what he can work with with the five. Oh, he tried to use inside English to really break it out. But he missed the pack, he missed the pot. And I don't think Nigel has a shot here. How do you like to play yourself? I like kicking lightly into the 
behind him before and just pushing it into the pack just there so it's not potable. Oh yeah. That's that's how I would do it. Oh you could see it. Okay. Oh no, he could see it. Oh wow. That's a nice shot, isn't it? What a nice shot. Left the cue ball there, sent the four behind him. Oh, I think Grant could was able to see a little bit the of the um, the very edge of the four ball, but um, might have rushed that a bit. Could have taken his time a little more. And I think Nigel will go for the four nine here. Oh, he wouldn't really. I would if I was Nigel Harris. I definitely would go for the four nine here, especially because the five ball is tied up too. So I might as well go for the four nine. And then that way, it'll also make me worry a little bit less about the um, five ball. Because for me personally, I feel like potting the four and then breaking out the five, the percentage of that is a lot lower than if I just went for the combo. And again, like I was mentioning before, uh, pull really is just about a set of percentages. You know, really, for example, this shot to Nigel's probably, you know, oh, very nice. Very nice shot. So he still went nice the attempt, breakout. but he didn't. He didn't get the roll. Yeah. Five is still in a awkward position. position. It doesn't. Yeah. I don't think it goes in an obvious pocket. Yeah. So that was always the risk of doing that, uh, because once you break out the ball, you don't exactly know where it's going to hit, yeah, and you, you lose, need a little bit control. of a roll. You lose control. That's right. Exactly. Is he kicking at this five ball? He is. He tried to kick it into me. Oh, good attempt. No, it's on. Let's see, I think this five ball onto the six for Grant is really just the key ball here. If Grant can land nicely on the six ball, I think that's the match. Nice left English. Oh, I think he's overran it. Not too far, you can only see the left side. Yeah. So you see, that's what I was saying before. But if Grant was able to land on the six ball, I think that would have been basically the tournament for him. And now he'll, oh! Oh my God, well he can see the potting angle, but I just don't think he can see the potting angle. It's like that in every shot. Yeah, sorry guys about that. We just don't have a good angle on the, on the, on the table. But, um, oh. I assume like Grant is rushing a bit now to kind of just close everything out. Or he could just be, you know, just feeling in his rhythm so he's just getting down. But he's not getting down on the shot nearly as long as he has usually. Or nearly as long uh, as he does usually, I should say. Chance for Nigel again. Again, two balls left. Oh, what a shot! And a nice kiss on the nine. I don't know if that's a very good kiss. It's do or die here. It's yeah. do or die. This is the momentum shift I was doing about. Oh, it was Nigel cutting it down the table? I don't know if that's something that's possible, man. Very, very difficult shot. Very difficult shot. Good idea, good idea. Getting up to recheck the angle. Oh, he's cutting it. Oh, <laughs> and he's scratched on the nine ball. <laughs> and I think oh, that's going to be it. G -G. Yeah, Grant will just well, we well at least we'll expect Grant to pop this nine ball. And that's the tournament. There we go. Congratulations, Grant. Congratulations, Grant. Very very nicely played. Very dominant performance all throughout the tournament. Uh, quite a quick match. Quite a one-sided match. Uh, Grant was able to stay in control. Yeah, um, I think Nigel had his chances, but at the same time, um, like what Harris said, during key moments, it's always been, um, yeah, it's all, it's it's always just something that's kind of just not with Nigel and Grant was able to capitalize on those key moments a lot more. Anyway, we would like to watching. thank our sponsors, uh, QSOC sponsors, are uh, City Heroes, obviously, and Mikirin. Um, Mikrin is a, is a Asian fusion, Asian fusion, fusion Asian Jap fusion, yeah, in, very, uh, very uh, nice ramen, very, very nice ramen, amazing.
If you guys can eat chili, I definitely recommend you guys to go Mikrin. Last time I went there was very, very good food. Large portions as well. Um, and you know, uh, very reasonable price. Very reasonably, reasonably priced. Yeah, good game. See, uh, what's the next competition, Brandon? Um, snooker, right? I honestly have no idea. I think it's snooker's a snooker on next competition. Week. Snooker's yeah. on, uh, what, it's the 23rd. I think snooker's on the 30th. Right. So, um, make know. sure you I guys head down. There, I don't know if I'll be there either. I'm very much a pool player at heart. But if and you I guys do come to snooker, uh, I believe it's a full competition as well, just like nine more, So. Yeah. All right. Well, peace out. We'll see you guys next time.